when i look at african leadership generally i immediately get disgusted i immediately get dismayed and i immediately get disappointed i'm just being real i'm just you know i'm just being real leadership in this continent is absolutely it's an embarrassment it's an embarrassment now of course there are good apples there are good apples but the bad apples are way too overwhelming now i have a question for african leaders when you wake up in the morning okay when you when you when you when you wake up in the morning when you're getting ready to go to your office the big question is what are you going to do in that office what are you going to do in that office that's the big question what are you going to do are you going to serve the people or are you going to take from your people what are you going to do now there are four types of african leaders number 1 are african leaders who are totally in for themselves and themselves only they are unapologetic in their ignorance arrogance corruption and foolishness they don't care about the people all they care about is themselves and themselves only and they are in office to take take and take number 2 are african leaders who are in for themselves but the difference is they do some work for the community they build some schools they build some roads they do some some, some good things but their primary reason for being in office is to take 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 the only difference is they do some good things in the community number 3 are african leaders who are genuine who are in to work for the people but the problem the the problem comes in when their work is not revolutionary when the problem comes in when these leaders are not visionaries they don't have a vision for the country all they care about is finishing their presidential term they don't they don't have a 50 they don't have a 100 year vision for their country they are short term thinkers but they are good people and they work hard for the people they are totally in to genuinely work for the people they are just not revolutionaries and they are just not visionaries number 4 are african leaders who are revolutionaries who are visionaries they are in to work for the people they are in to change the game and they are in to revolutionize all systems in that country they are in because they have a 50 they have a they have a 100 year plan a 100 year vision for the country the question comes in when i when i ask where does your african leader lie where does your african leader lie in those four categories you know when it comes to african leaders the problem is that we lack leaders who have a vision for africa africa is full of leaders who are very short minded who only think about finishing their presidential term If we are really going to change Africa, we need leaders who have a vision, a vision for Africa, a 50, a 100 year vision of where Africa should be in the world. 
Kwame Nkrumah had a vision. Thomas Sankara had a vision. Patrice Lumumba had a vision. We don't have leaders who have a vision, a vision for this continent. We don't. We don't. And that's one of the reasons why Africa is failing. We need to have a vision. I want to challenge African leaders to have a vision for this continent. Another big issue is corruption. And, and, and I think I should have started with this because this is the biggest issue facing African leadership, corruption. Now, let me say this. If you know you're a corrupt African leader, you're a stupid and you're a useless person. And you can tell them I said it. You can tell them I, I told them that they're stupid and they're useless people. I'm so sick and tired of these leaders. You know how heartless you have to be to steal from dying people in hospitals, to steal from kids who are receiving the lowest quality of education, to steal from, from, from hardworking Africans, from hardworking tax-paying Africans who are working 10 to 12 hours a day. You must be a stupid person. You must be a useless person. And after all, what are you going to do with that money? You're going to... You're going to spend it on stupid things like expensive cars, like expensive jewelry, like, a, you know, unnecessary, expensive, big, colossal mansions. At the expense of us, you are a stupid, you're a useless person. People have to die. We have to suffer a bad economy so that you can enjoy your mansion. So that, And you know what? Let me say this. You can never find enjoyment and, 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 and satisfaction when you are buying material things from stolen money. You'll never find, you'll never find enjoyment and satisfaction in material things that are as a result of stolen money. That Louis Vuitton bag, that Gucci suit, that big flat screen TV, that expensive phone, that expensive jewelry, expensive watch. You'll never find peace when you're using them because those things are as a result of stolen money. Those things have been bought by stolen money and anything. And this is, and this is, you know, not only to these African leaders, but to just everybody, when you are in possession of stolen money and when you buy things that are, uh, 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 are from stolen money, you'll never find enjoyment and satisfaction in them. Mark my words. And these African leaders are so, you know, because at, at the end of the day, when you die, your kids... Your spoiled children are going to use your money and they're going to use your wealth into alcohol, into hard drugs, and they're going to suffer from the effects of it. Your wife, on the other hand, is going to use that money on some young boy, 20 years younger than her. You know, we are just stupid people. We are just useless people. And let me say this. Let me say this to these African leaders. You will never. Let me say this. You will never find peace in your life for as long as you're in possession of stolen African wealth, of stolen African money. Taxpayers, African money, you'll never find peace in your life for as long as you're in possession of stolen African, of stolen African wealth and African money. You'll never ever find peace and your family will also never find peace in their lives for as long as you are in possession of stolen African wealth and stolen African money. You can tell them that I said it. You know, these are just, you know, I'm so sick and tired of these leaders. 
even when you turn on the TV and you just watch them speak, you feel embarrassed. You feel like smashing that TV into little pieces. These are these are useless people. And I'm not scared to say it. These are useless people. Another thing I want to tell them. Before you put pen to paper to any deal that is presented to you by all these white countries, by all these Arabian countries, by all these Asian countries, please think twice. Before these white people, before these Arabian people, before these Asian people do anything in Africa, ask them, please ask them one question. And the question is, can I do the same thing that you want to do in my country, in your country? If the answer to that question is no, please do not sign that deal. I'm so sick and tired of these deals. I mean, th th these leaders just signing deals left, right and center without thinking. You guys just sign anything that these white people, that these Asians, that these Arabs, th 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 I mean, you guys just sign anything that they present to you. And they end up messing this continent. They end up messing Africa. What is wrong with you people? Do you really care about Africa? And about African people. You know, I've been thinking about this issue. I've been deeply thinking about the issue of poor leadership in Africa. And I came to a conclusion that the solution is us. Is us, the common citizen, the common African citizen. We have to do some few things. Number one, we never, effective immediately, we never vote for a leader that doesn't have a vision. I didn't say a short-term plan. I didn't say a short-term project. I said a vision. If a leader is campaigning and he is, and, and he is showing no sign of, 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 of having a vision. Please, 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 please just throw him away. We don't even want to hear you. Number two. If that African leader or if these African leaders don't have a plan to decolonize an African country, leave him alone. He's a useless guy. Just, just, just leave him alone. Number three, if your African leader doesn't have a plan or is not interested in African unity, throw him away. Never vote for him. Number four, if your leader is not interested in accommodating the African diaspora economically, socially, and politically into Africa. Leave him alone. Or leave her alone. These are useless people. Just, just don't even, don't even think about voting for them. Just forget them effective immediately. And what we need to do is that we need to push for an African leadership program in every African high school. I am so sick and tired of kids in school being taught how many legs does a, does a, does a cockroach have? How many legs does a, does, a, does a mouse have? Who cares? Who cares about that? Who cares about 3x plus x is equals to 4x? Who cares about that? We need to teach our children how to be responsible African leaders. We need to teach them how to budget. We need to teach them 
how to how to how to manage public money we need to teach them how to stand up for africa whenever africa is under attack from all these white people and from all these other races who want to ruin africa that's what we need to teach them not all these stupid things and all these useless things that we teach them in school we are wasting our kids time we need solutions my final message to all these leaders is that nobody remembers bad leaders nobody remember nobody remembers useless leaders history history judges bad leaders harshly who remembers bad leaders in africa but everybody remembers kwame nkrumah everybody remembers thomas sankara everybody remembers a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, patrice lumumba <laughs> people remember good leaders the names of good outstanding leaders live forever but the names of these useless leaders presently and historically they don't last so my question to you is this how do you want history to judge you do you want to be remembered or do you want to be forgotten when you die if you want to be remembered do the right thing if you, if you don't want to be remembered then continue doing what you do continue doing what what continue doing what you know best and that's stealing from us and let's see where that will and let's see where that will lead you 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 stupid you useless you sell out you coons let's see where that one will lead you <laughs>